guys and girls. Another episode on Andy's Caddy, zero budget restorations. You know the van by now, well hopefully you do. If you don't, there's a few more episodes before this one. We're doing what we can to Andy's Caddy for zero budget, because that's what we have. Whatever I've got laying around in the workshop or whatever we can do for zero pounds or little pounds, we're gonna do. Andy's got the jacked up model, i.e. she is up here. Literally, it looks like a four by four caddy, but it's just got high suspension, standard suspension. It's a bit wallowy. It's a bit bouncy. We've got some lowering springs. We're gonna do an axle flip, but we're gonna do an axle flip for absolutely nothing. I'll get the wheels off, we'll get it up in the air, and we'll have a better look. Let's get straight into it. Ah, right, yeah. We are going to get the front shocks off. Gonna get the front shocks off, fit some lowering springs, uh, nice and simple, nice and easy. Big shout out to all you guys that have shared the channel and shared Andy's videos. Also, some of you have donated some fundage uh, towards Andy's build. Big thank you for that. Andy is super happy. And uh, we could just fit some springs to these shocks, but one of them's bouncy. I have earned 180 pounds from two videos, the first two videos. So I've bought Andy some new front shocks. We've got him some used front springs, some lowering springs, about a 60 mil drop. We're gonna fit them on, so we need to get the hubs drop down, nice and simple, bolt on the outside, get the caliper hanging, unclip the ABS wire, maybe a brake pad sensor, all simple stuff. To get the, uh, the top legs out, there is three 13 mil bolts facing downwards. So we're gonna get the scuttle panel out. There's a few hiding 10 mil bolts. There's a couple under here. Get the wipers off, get the scuttle panel out. Let's have a better look. Let's see how bad these top bolts are because sometimes they can be a bit corroded. Over the years, I have worked out a method on how to get the wipers off. They can be a bit of a wiggle, so a cheeky little DTE top tip. You know we like them. We've got the caps out of the way, we've got the 30 mil bolts, and I've pulled the, uh, the wiper up, and then I'm just gonna pull it up and down. It's a leverage point on this end ball socket. Just like that. Don't think they've ever been off. I have wrestled over the years until I learnt the technique. The van's a little bit high in the air. And why is the wiper moving? Can you see that? The wiper shouldn't be moving, the ignition's off. Hmm, hmm, hmm. But, caddy bonnet's getting in the way, so I should be able to, oh no, that's not happening. Um, ramp's a little bit high, because I am a super tall geezer, or not. Up and down, without breaking the windscreen. Oh yeah. Don't know why the wipers are moving like that. Maybe the motor's on its way out. They still work. Wipers off, nice and simple. Let's get these 10 mil bolts out of the way. Get you out of the way. Uh, you can leave the sound padding on. That's better than my sound padding. Just kidding. Let's get this out of the way and see what's on top. Something I want to mention, channel's picked up a little bit of pace lately. That is because of all you guys commenting and liking on the videos. It really helps the algorithm promote YouTube or promote the channel on YouTube. So big thanks to all you. I have been inundated, I believe that's the right word, with emails and messages on the Facebook page about doing work for like you guys at home. And without sounding rude, I don't have the time. Um, my caddy, Andy's caddy, T5, a handful of customers, there is not enough hours in the day to be doing any of your, your vehicles at home. I, I appreciate the offer, I really do. So if I don't reply, or if I do reply, and I say no, politely, don't get offended, please. There just ain't enough hours in the day. Um, but thank you to everyone who has been commenting, liking and sharing the videos because the channel has picked up a bit of pace. 
Oh yeah, a uh, couple of these bolts, so that is going to start donking around and we don't like funny mics. Oh yeah, there is some hiding ones under here somewhere. There he is. It had a new windscreen recently and whoever done that broke the scuttle plastic but it's still there. It's good enough for the girls we date. Um, oh, this one is hiding. There he is. You. Happy days. We've got some T30s because there's three bolts that face down on the front struts. Don't undo the big nut in the center, not yet. Don't do it. Uh, let's get these three T30s out of the way. Get the wiper out the, mo out the way. And I'll explain about these three bolts because they can be a bit of a wiggle. We're all stripped down and we're in and we've got access to what we need. You can see the three 13 mil bolts facing downwards Ratchet, you can't do these with a gun, unless you've got a tiny, tiny little gun, but I doubt it. Or one of them power ratchets, that'd be nice. Anyway, when you try to undo some of these three 13mm bolts, the thread that goes into the top mount is quite corroded. And as you go to undo them, the lock nut that is press fitted into the top mount starts to spin. And then you're in a world of pain. You can get mole grips from underneath, I go straight in with an air hacksaw and cut the head of the bolt off. If you're reusing the top mount, you can just bang that out and use a nut and a bolt. And then when it comes to refitting, you just have to get up in there with something to hold it. Can we see? No, GoPro says not today. Anyway, you can squirt these threads up. There's one, two, three poking down. I'm gonna squirt them up. If they get a bit tight, I'm gonna work them back and forth and uh, we'll try and get them out without cutting them because it can be a bit of a slog. I'm going to squirt these up and then we're going to move on to undoing some bottom stuff. Let's get some bits done. So I'm just taking off the caliper. Oh mate, 21 mils off the inside. They are tight. And some of you may be thinking, well, you're only taking the shock out. Why are you undoing the caliper bolts? Well, on certain vehicles, when taking the shock out of the hub, you obviously undo the pinch bolt and then you want the shock or the hub to drop down. Because I'm mentioning this because when I lowered my caddy, I had a few emails, comments, you guys saying, you don't need to take the hub all the way off to do that. You're right. I've been fixing motors for 20 years. 10 of them in this workshop, and I have broke a large number of things over my time. And if I break them, I've got to pay for them. So I've worked out a method to do a lot of things without breaking stuff. And sometimes when you just try to hammer the shock or the hub downwards with everything attached, not only does it pull tight on hoses, it pulls the inner CV joint apart then you've either got to take it all apart because all the ball bearings have dropped out or you've got to fight it to get it back in. So rather than having to wrestle with drive shafts and stuff, I'm just going to spend an extra five minutes pulling the hub all the way off. That makes it easier to reassemble. Well, that's my thoughts anyway. So I am getting the caliper carrier bolts and caliper out of the way. And let me tell you, they are... FT a lot of the time. I am going to push the piston back in the caliper ever so slightly because there's the smallest lip on the disc. And if we didn't, where's the, and if we didn't uh, push the piston back in a little bit, you'd be having to hammer the caliper off. I've seen so many people hammer in the caliper off. Just push the piston back in. Uh, the disc has not got a retainer, a retainer bolt, so that's going to fall off. And because I push my piston back in, 
my caliper slide straight off. Desk on the floor, oh, need more hands. Will that reach the floor without getting tired? I'll put something under it. So I need to get the three bolts out that hold the wishbone, undo the drive shaft nut, undo the pinch bolt, undo the drop link. Oh, drop links. If you're a mechanic and you, uh, you know about drop links, they're a pain. Sometimes I just go straight in with the grinder. But we need these, so I can't. Um, I'm gonna get these off. It's probably gonna take me 10 minutes. Uh, and that will get me to the shock. I said I was gonna squirt up the bolts, but I haven't done it yet. I better do that now, then I'll bang all this off and we'll see where we're up to. Looks pretty sweet in here. Everything looks good, CV boots are good. Next MOT should be good. I haven't showed you guys the underneath of this yet. Today is the day because we're getting underneath. Anyway, let me smash these out. Literally. Everything else is undone. I'm just about to drop the hub down. Little bit of squirt in there. And I did squirt up my bolts in there, ready. So I can't find my shock open at all. Basically, it opens up pinch bolts. That is one I made, but it's too wide. So it's a round bolt with two flat sides. You put it in the pinched area, turn it 90 degrees, ah, and it opens up. I'll put a picture up of a proper one now. I can't find it. I probably will find it for, on reassembly. But if you guys at home haven't got one, simply a chisel. Because I've stripped everything to one side, I've turned it all the way around. Now I've got easy access to the, uh, the split in the back, shall we call it. Simply, as you see in a lot of YouTube videos, simply remove hub. We've got the chisel facing down. And as I hammer it down, not only does it open it up, it, um, it knocks it down too, which is pretty sweet. Don't want it to land on me. I'm doing it precariously. I think it's actually loose. Yep. You out the way. We wasn't so lucky. First bolt undone. Second one started to go. Third one, can you see, it starts to spin. So I've now got to ground the head off this with a grinder, any way you can. If you're using a grinder, be careful your windscreen because the sparks will mark it. Anyway, I'm gonna grind this off, hopefully undo that, and I'll show you a better look of what they look like when we finally get it out. I've got a belt sander, that should do it. <sighs> what a wrestle that was. It took me 10 minutes aside to get the whole hub assembly, drive shaft, everything out. It then took me over an hour to get six bolts out. The three bolts I mentioned that go into the top mount, well, they bolt the captive nuts. There's one. It's a round nut. There's not even any squareness to it. There is on the head. You might be able to get a socket on it if you're lucky from up underneath. Anyway, those bad boys spin out. You end up having to cut the heads off. What an absolute slog. We need to reuse these top mounts, so we're gonna have to put nuts and bolts through it. I've already done one, disassembled, new shock absorber, and they are just some 25 quid lowering springs off Facebook Marketplace. They were a bit corroded, put a little bit tss, tss, black gloss on them, they look a bit better. Well, look a lot prettier in fact. They look a lot prettier in fact, because we've got nice shiny new shocks. Let's go get this old one on the uh, spring compressor and uh, let's see how the spring comes off safely. So, we are down at my friend Pinch's workshop. He's got the spring compressor tool. I had one and we both used it for a few years. It was an eBay cheap one, but surprisingly it done the job for a while. My one broke, Pinch got one. I'm using his. I'm using his gun because these can be tight. If you've got to use the little bolt up spring compressors, you're braver than I am. Anyway, uh, these are quite tight. We need the top mounts, you can't just cut them off. Do not just undo these nuts without compressing the spring. Mine is lightly in there. 
it's not compressed all the way because the bolt's tight. I'd need to keep an eye on this. So the bolt is moving. If I'd have jacked it all the way up and it had a pivot, it wouldn't have undone. I'm gonna go in and out a couple of times. And we're there. If you had to use those silly little spring compressors, you would be there a while. That nut is hot. Is this shock knackered? Oh, that's hot. The other shock was like like a bike pump. This one weren't, cool, that is hot. This one weren't too bad. We got new ones anyway. This, uh, the lowering springs are that low, we don't need a spring compressor to compress them back on. Happens quite a lot, you put lowering springs on, you put the spring on, top mount goes straight on. But uh, let's go and find out. Didn't do any filming, putting it back together. It was a bit of a slog, let me tell you. Um, Putting the shocks back in the hubs, they were a really tight fit. There's two types of shock absorber on these. There's the 50 and 55 mil, and his were definitely 55, and the new ones were 55, but they were a squeeze. So I just put it all back together, and it is definitely a lot lower on the front. We're happy with that. Um, we're gonna do the rears tomorrow. I haven't got any shackle kit. I haven't got any axle plates, any axle flips. I'm going to show you how I do it with a grinder and a welder for absolutely nothing. Anyway, that's it for today. We'll wait for Andy to come back tomorrow. We'll get it back on the ramp, get this rear axle off, and let's get this thing on the deck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we're on day two. We are cracking straight on with the rears. Remember, I don't have any uh, centralising plates, any... I have absolutely nothing. It's just a case of lowering it, the same way I did my caddy. Cutting off and welding the mounting plates back on. We've only got a few hours. Got it up in the air and we need to get the rear beam off. It's quite easy. We've got hanger brackets at the back, but these are normally quite tight. So I'm gonna try and leave them alone. We're gonna undo the front ones. We need to get the anti-roll bar off. Let me get round here. Anti-roll bar off, but I'm just gonna undo it. One, two, three, four. I'm not even gonna bother undoing the drop link. So I'm gonna undo the anti-roll bar, let that swing forward. We're gonna take the bottom shock bolts out, the calipers off, hang them to one side and uh, yeah, undo the hangers, let it swing down, undo the U-bolts, take, uh, take the rear axle off, stick it on the top, cut the bump stops down. Let's see. Half hour later, we did have one of the anti-roll bar bolts quite stuck. They're a 16 mil, and if you're gonna do this job, make sure your socket is all the way on, because one rounded off, bit of a wrestle to get it out. But 20 minutes, everything's ready, I've undone the rear shackle, no they're not rear shackles, the rear hangers, sorry. I've only cracked them off because the back bolts, on every caddy that I've played with, the back hanger bolts have been awful, i.e. you try to undo them, they lock up, pain in the aris. So I've took the nuts and the bolts off of the front of the leaf spring and just cracked the rear ones. We're going to take the weight, pull the bolts out, and the axle should hang down. Well, we're gonna find out. Ready, And? Yeah, mate. So you're gonna have to push up on the... Mm, my bolt, my bolt's not loose. I think it's quite heavy. Memory serves me right. Well, it did move. Probably 
<sighs> Safer to get a jack and wood. Yeah, I'd, I'd more prefer that. Hey. <laughs> um. And we can jack the axle up, take the pressure off. All right, let's reschedule. <laughs> so Andy got a bit scared. And he's right too. We've got a block of wood. Well, I say a block of wood, we've got a bit of 18 mil board stood sideways. Holding the axle up. Trying to get the last bolt out. Yeah. Both bolts are out. If you just grab this end of this leaf yeah. and leaf it out, I'll grab this one. Lower it down. Swinging. Um, gonna undo the U bolts. Obviously, I need someone holding each end. Or I suppose I could dagger dagger and hold one end and hold. We need to get this axle off and uh, see the next bit. But it's not too bad. Caliper off. You haven't got to touch the cables. Haven't touched the hoses. Shocks are still bolted on at the top. Anti roll bar. Literally just cracked these bolts off and we got swinger. I'm not going to take them right off. We haven't got any hanger plates, so it's going to be low. Let's get this rear beam off. Shackle bolts are off. Got, you got it, and? Yes, mate. You don't look like you got it. Got it. It's heavier than you're thinking. Probably. <laughs> I'll get one end. Uh, hammer. All right, so I'll get this end. All right. You get that end. Got it, mate. Ready? Yep. Cool. What? What can I hold? Let's try that. There's one. Uh, yeah. You get this end. Yep, got it. <laughs> Oh yeah, straight on the deck. Right, let's have a look at this beam. Get the camera. Beam's on the floor. Um, I'm right in the sunlight. Cool, that took a whack. Basically, the leaf spring sits on that. We're doing an axle flip, so I need to cut this off and weld it on the bottom. Then the leaf spring sits on the bottom. This is a guide for the U-bolts. I also cut that off and weld that on the top. So literally, I'm just flipping those round. But what you need to do is get it dead level to where it was before, perpendicular, you might say, on the bottom. And how do you do that? Well, oh, I'm petered out. Let me cut this off, cut that off, get set up, and I'll show you how we get that absolutely spot on on the bottom. That is what the hangers or the mounts look like on one side. And this is a modified side. Can you see? That used to be on the bottom, but now I've cut it off and I've welded it on the top. But to make sure it's the same angle, if we check the spirit level, can we see? I'm sure we can. Spirit level is in the center. And just to double check, you put the spirit level underneath. It's gonna be quite hard with one hand. and the spirit level is underneath uh, and level. So now we know that that pad that I've welded on is absolutely perpendicular to that one. I measured the gap between the shock mount to that gap. It's the exact same as that side and it's the same as it was before. So I know that that wants to live exactly there. I'm gonna weld both sides, both edges, then flip it over the other way and do the spirit level from one side to the other and then square off that side when we weld it. Then when it comes to these, these are the hanger U-bolt clamps. I've cut one off this side, uh, which is kicking about, I don't know, somewhere, but, oh, there he is. 
there's one there and I'm going to weld that under there so it's as it was but 180 degrees the opposite way axle flip I'm going to weld this one on cut that one off weld that one back on and uh yeah, these should be sweet to go back on. So we have got both spring perches, spring mounts, welded on the other side. Literally 180 out. If you're watching this and you're still unsure, let me quickly say it slowly. Joking. So those spring perches were on the other side. Yeah, nice and simple. And uh, I've cut them off and I've welded them on the bottom, so to speak. But to get them level... We used a spirit level. Andy, if you can uh, spirit level me up. Don't knock the mount. So, level, close enough. And if we come to this side, close enough. And I did measure the distance between the bottom of the shock mount. They're all welded on, I just need to weld this hanger doobery, the U-bolts uh, go into it on the bottom, then that's the axle finished. I am going to soak all cool this in some zinc spray, bit of matte black, tss, tss, just to cover it up. One last thing to show you on axle flipping for free. This is the locator pin. You can see that. On this side, grab it with a pair of mole grips. And if we come around this side, you can see there is a nut. Uh, GoPro might not pick it out, but there's a nut there. That's a 16 mil, believe it or not. Hammer your socket all the way on. Hold that with a pair of mole grips. That comes out, and I've already flipped this one, and I've put a new nut on it because the nut was a bit petered out. Nut on it, pair of mole grips, just to show you, and that has flipped the bolt, the locator bolt, 180 as well. Get some paint on it, let's lift it back up. We're axle flipped for zero pounds. Just to, uh, for safety reasons, of course, before you go out there with an angle grinder and a stick welder or a soldering iron or something like that, if you're unsure, obviously get some advice from someone who's good with a welder. Someone who, who is mechanically minded. Ow. That sounded hollow. <laughs> obviously, my weld on my spring perch was a bit of a slug. Nice, big, thick bead of weld. I'm happy with it. Um, obviously the axle is still secured with the bolts but you do want to make sure your spring perch is nice and solid mine's happy we're happy with that I've put some black all over it literally dripping with black to get it in everywhere stop it from rusting to refit it we got it precariously on some blocks of wood oh, it's quite solid actually two people you need three me and Andy struggled we struggled a bit didn't we Andy? a little bit yeah um, we got it into the locators, held it, got the nuts. Three people would be nice. Now, I've hammered them up lightly with a gun. But I don't know how tight they are because of the gun. So I'm just checking them with a bar. Trying not to knock it off. I'm happy they are tight. Um, now we need to lift it up. We tried doing it by hand, but that didn't go well last time. We're going to lift it up and put the front bolts in. As easy as that. First thing we're going to look at is putting the rear shock into the hole, because if I remember rightly, it was quite hard to get the nut and the bolt in. And if you do an axle flip, I believe there's a company... Oh no, that was when you weld them on. I don't know. But I know the bolt is quite tight to get in the shock. So we're going to lift this up off camera, precariously. But we'll get it done safely. And uh, we'll have a look. Axle is all back on, bolted up nicely. And tools everywhere. The nut and the bolt for the rear shock, it used to go in through this way. But now I've put it in through that way. It was a close hit on there. It went at a slight angle, hit the bolt in, and it went straight. So flip the bolt round 180, and you haven't got to do any adaptions to that. Uh, handbrake cable. So on my car, or my caddy, 
when I lowered it, the brakes are tight. We can see it's slightly locked up. And because we've axle flipped it, if you remember the axle was down here, now we've lifted it up, you've got a slight kink in the handbrake cable. Well, all the cables in fact. But because of the slight kink in the handbrake cable, that is ever so slightly pulling the handbrake on. So I need to get in the vehicle and back the handbrake cable off ever so slightly. 10 mil lock nut, back it off slightly just so these are spinning. And that is because of the extra kink in the hose. Um, other than that, while I do this, Andy's going to lower it down and we've got something pretty cool going on with the steelies. Let's have a butcher's. Don't forget to cut your bump stops down. I cut two bumps off with a uh, reciprocating saw, straight through, two of them, both sides, nice and easy. On to the steelies. Andy's tickled them off with a bit of sandpaper. He's gonna spend a little while taping all the tires up, making them pretty, we've metal cleaned them. Just kidding, Andy, spin the wheel. A few of you did mention in the comments about blacking up the steelies, and I was going to do it anyway. A few of you did mention about blacking up the steelies, and I was going to do it, but you guys were so right. Black steelies look a lot better than silver ones, and uh, yeah, they'll do until he gets uh, a pair of alloys or a set of alloys. I have gone for satin black, so it will dry off. We'll do the other three. We're gonna lower it down. It is on the original hangers. It might be too low, because normally you get hangers and they're adjustable. It's gonna be low. If it's too low, we'll have to get some hangers or we'll have to make some. But let's get the uh, other three steelies done. Let's get it down and get it outside. I am super keen to see how it looks. So if you remember how it looked before, rear jack up mode, Oh uh, yeah, it's definitely a lot lower. It is a lot lower. I did also put a skosh of white, crudely, but zero budgetly, on that front wing. It'll do for now. I believe we've got some new front wings. Let's have a better look at this outside in the sun, because she is on the deck. So it is quite low. Remember, when you lower the rear of a caddy, you're meant to buy the, uh, the rear hanger plates with multiple holes in. Well, obviously we didn't buy any of them. We just left the standard ones on, which puts it on the deck. Now, if we look down, it looks good. The sill is level with the concrete. The front is ever so slightly higher. Oh, I forgot, check out them steelies. They look wicked, don't they? Yeah, the black steels look good. It's a bit lower at the back than the front, but it cost us zero pounds. Maybe we'll lift the back up at a later date. Maybe we'll find some cheap coil overs to make it look level. Again, you look at the sill, it's level. That's a bit lower. This side's looking sweet. And as I mentioned, we might have a new set of wings. Some guy got in touch, he's coming to meet us at the caddy meet tomorrow, and he's bringing some new wings. So uh, thank you very much, we'll see. Um, that looks sweet, looks good on the steelies. Happy hand? I love it, mate. Looks good, doesn't it? Amazing, yeah. Them steelies come up really well. Um, yes, definitely a million dollars. She's. We're getting close to a five foot around. Yeah. We've gone from 20 down to 10, down to five. Yeah, that looks really good. We need to stick some wings on it. We're gonna color code the lower half of the bumper. We're gonna get Big Love a new fresh number plate on the front. The back one's tidy. This side needs a little bit more TLC. We need to wipe off these anti-rust marks, give it a clean, give it a polish. Andy's going to give it a wash at home tomorrow and we're going to the caddy meet. It's the following day and it is bright and sunny. I've got the door halfway pulled down 
trying to keep the sun out of my eyes, trying to get the shot, you can see a bit of exposure or overexposure going on down here. Hopefully it's good because the last shot outside on the walk around was absolutely pony. The GoPros are quite sensitive. To get the best footage, you turn the anti-stabilization off and then you need to remember, I do 99.9% .9 of the time, to turn it back on before you do a walk around. But yesterday, I didn't. So a bit of pony footage towards the end. I do apologize. Uh, anyway, quick recap. Andy's caddy, it is looking a lot better. We lowered the front, 25 quid for some lowering springs. Facebook Marketplace, super cheap. I did get him some new shocks. I've earned 180 pound out of the two first videos. So I spent 80 quid on some new shocks. I've bought him a headlight switch for inside and a couple of other bits just to pimp it up a little bit. Um, it's coming together very nice. And with the axle flip, we didn't spend absolutely anything. It's just a case of taking it off, cutting, moving some plates on the other side, welding them back on, super simple. You are meant to have some hangers on the back when you do the axle flip. If you just axle flip it, it's a bit too low. We do need to get some hangers or I need to make something to raise it up a little bit because it's a skosh too low. He texted me about an hour after he left saying um, it's grounding out, getting onto his garden. The daily struggles. Always when you get a camera out, someone turns up or drives past. Anyway, he texts me to say it's grounding out on his garden. So we're going to raise it up an inch or so. We'll do that in another episode when we fit the front wings and a few other bits like that. Um, and I managed to, I did manage to earn 180 quid from the first two videos because you guys were commenting and liking on the videos. That really boosted the channel. It boosted the video's performance with the algorithm. What happens is you guys comment on the video, YouTube's algorithm picks that up, promotes it further, more views, got paid a little bit more, spent it back on Andy's caddy. Big shout out to all you guys. So thanks for all the comments, likes, and all the other stuff. You know, the good stuff, the YouTube stuff. Really appreciate it. It's definitely helping the channel. Um, yeah, it's going down well. Andy's caddy, zero budget restorations. That's going down really well, and I'm enjoying it. A lot of channels you might see people just throw money at it left, right and centre. Well, I don't have the money like that to do it. Andy definitely doesn't. So we're doing what we can on a low budget. And it's going down pretty well. Anyway, it's the, uh, it's the, cad it's the caddy meet tonight. Last Wednesday of every month. Andy's, exci Andy's excited to take his van. I'm looking forward to getting up there. Hopefully uh, a few of you guys turn up and hopefully we don't get turfed out this time. Anyway, that is about going to do it from Andy's video this week or a video on Andy's caddy. I'm just fiddling with mine. Caddy meat tonight. Need to clean it. And yes, I'm actually cleaning every wheel, every spoke. It's a bit long-winded. But we'll get it nice and shiny, ready for the meat. Anyway, if you've enjoyed the video, click the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Drop a comment down below. And I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm out.